Hey folks, Bridges here. Um, just a quick little video to um, get us introduced to making maps on um, Google Maps. So where I'm at, as you can see, is on Google Maps. Okay. Um, instead of going to a specific location, you can just type in maps.google.com and it would take you to, well, it looks like it took me to um, where I currently am. Um, I must have location settings turned on on this computer. Um, more than likely, it's going to take you to a, a map of the U.S. without your uh, location settings. So no worries. Um, from here, what we want to do this is so this is um, this is the public um, Google Maps. This is whatever Google has curated. Uh, it's a map that Google has put together of the U.S. Um, and whatever Google thinks is important to put on the map as far as items, um, it's on there. And some people, um, there is a way that you can submit um, something to be on the Google map, um, but they do have to first uh, okay it and verify that that information is good, things of that nature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a customized map of places of interest to you. All right, so the way that we're gonna do that is um, we're gonna go up to the menu over here on the left. Here, maybe it'll help if I turn on the, um, I've got like a little, a little thing here, uh, a little yellow finder. So we're going to go up to the top left and go to menu. And we're going to go to um, the bookmark th thing here. It says your places. And by the way, you do need to be logged in um, with your Viking mail account. And you can, you'll can you know that you are if you see the, your little picture or your initials up here in the corner. All right. So um, once we log in or once we go to um, your places, Right here again, your places. We are not, we don't really care about lists. We don't care about places that you have labeled or visited. But what we do care about is maps. Okay. And you can see I've got several different maps on my saved. Okay. Um, but I'm going to go, you probably don't. And I'm going to go down here and we're all going to create a new map together down at the bottom. So go ahead and click on the create map. And when you do that, it's going to just like a Google Doc, okay? We just made a new map, okay? Google Docs, when you create a new doc, it gives you an untitled document. When you create a new Google Slides, it gives you an untitled slides, okay? We created a new map and it's calling it untitled map. So at the very top, let's click on that untitled map and let's change the name of our map to, let's call it EES, which is Engineering Essentials. Call it Unit 4 Intro. And you can add a description to the map if you wish, okay? Um, it's not necessary. So I'm going to tell you what we're going to do during this video in this description. We are going to um, rename app layer. You're going to add places to a layer. We are going to create and import layer data. And that's probably about it. So you'll see what some of this means here in just a minute. So when I was talking about layers, a layer is like a transparent um, sheet, sheet of plastic, if you will. And right now there's a layer over top of this map and it's called the untitled layer. And there's nothing on there right now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put some, we're going to retitle it and we're going to put some points of interest on this layer that could be toggled on and off, um, viewed on the view turned on and off with this checkbox. So let's go one thing at a time. Let's go ahead to this untitled layer and let's go to layer options and let's rename that layer and let's call it Princeton City Schools. And we'll say save. Okay. So now we've got a layer called Princeton City Schools on our map. And we can log in, or we can zoom in, and we can start putting points of interest that have to do with Princeton City Schools on our map, okay? Yes, we could type in Princeton Schools right up here in the search bar, but I am sort of a big um, advocate of getting familiar with your surroundings and zooming in to find. So we know that we are in Cincinnati. And if you look right here, there's this roughly circular-ish shape, and that's the 275 circle loop, okay? If you didn't know that we have a highway that circles our city, we do. And we are at the northern portion of that, right up here, where 275 intersects with um, 
I-75. So right around here. So I'm going to zoom in. Okay, there's Springdale is near us. Sharon, we're kind of right between Springdale and Sharonville. So let's zoom in a bit more here. Okay, um, there's the intersection of 275 and 75, and we are just southwest of that. So there's um, Chester Road, you see, and there's Sharon Road. We are right down there at that corner between Sharon and Chester, and there it is, Princeton High School. Okay, you can see if you zoom in just a bit more, there's the outline of our school. Okay, there's the football stadium. There's no outline over there, but it does say Pat Mancuso Field. And these are the, that's the old school. That's where the baseball and softball fields are now. So let's add some places to our map. Okay, and look, there are already some places of interest on Google Maps that we're going to add to our map. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on Princeton High School. With a single click, it, it not only um, brings up the name, but it also shows some details like the address, the website, a phone number, and even a 3.8 out of 5 stars on Google Maps, whatever that means. Okay, um, all this is called, all this information is called attribute data or attribute data. And um, all that attribute data is, is information that you can't see by just looking at the map. Okay, you notice I had to click on it to bring up this attribute data. So um, we're going to click add to map. So now we've got in our layer on our map, we've got one layer called Princeton City Schools, and we've got one location on our layer called Princeton High School. And we can go through and add other locations. We can add the Viking Village to our map by clicking on it and clicking on Add to Map. We can add the Middle School by clicking on it and clicking Add to Map. So there we've got three items on our layer so far. Okay, um, maybe, maybe I'm a football player and I want to put the football field on there. So I click over there, which is an existing place, and I click Add to Map. Okay, but look what's not on there. The baseball diamonds aren't on there. So if I were a baseball player, okay, I might want to go over here and um, drop a, what's called drop a pin. Okay, right here it's called add a marker. Excuse me. So I'm going to add a marker right here. Now you don't click and drag like I just did. That was a mistake. I'm going to click once on add marker, and I'm going to click right over here, and I'm going to click on that spot right there. Okay. Now again, this gray shape is it's called a polygon. And that should probably be removed because um, that old school does not exist anymore. So I'm not quite sure how to tell Google that that needs to be updated. Um, it's probably from their satellite imagery that's not updated recently. But I'm going to call this point. You can see that it's calling it point 0.5 right now, as in the fifth point on my map. Well, we want to rename that. We want to call that baseball and softball fields. Okay. I would say something like... Um, how many fields are over there? I think there's three. I, I can't see out the window right now. Three fields for baseball and softball. I could put more attribute data in there, such as if there's a concession stand, um, the maybe you would put the, the distance from home plate to the fence, um, whatever. You could put as much information in there as you want. You could even uh, take a picture and add in there if you were so inclined. I wish I had a picture to put in there, but I don't. So I'm going to hit save. Okay, and it gives us a, some geolocation coordinates, and it puts this on my map. Great. Um, I'm going to do one more spot, and I'm going to go over and put central office, which is off of... Uh, route 42, so this yellow line, I'm going to come up here. It's not quite to Kroger. It's off of Cottingham Drive, so I'm going to go back to Cottingham. And look, there's the district office, so I'll click that. And um, I'll add district office, but I'm also going to add um, in the same building is the Innovation Center. So I'll click there and click right there to make the Innovation Center go on there. And I'm going to do one more location. I know I told you that last time, but I'm going to put a new one on here. Um, if you've been paying attention to the news, you know that um, they are going to be renovating the old Tri-County Mall. So a developer bought it for a billion dollars with a B. And they're going to be making that into um, a combination space of some commercial bars and restaurants. And uh, there's going to be a dog park there. They're going to have some uh, residential, some multi, multiple family housing there, so like apartment buildings and such. Um, and that's right where the, the Tri-County Mall is today. So I'm going to zoom in. Uh, here it is, Princeton Pike, right there. So this is that area. So I'm going to go ahead and put on there, okay, 
you may or may not know this yet, but the upper floor to the old Dillard's right over here, that's going to be the Princeton Steam Academy. Exciting stuff, right? We don't know a lot of the details just yet, but I'm going to go ahead and add that to my map. Great. So um, I've added more items than I intended to. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items on my map right now. That's great. Okay. And those are all part of one layer called Princeton City Schools. Now, when I zoom out, you can see there's all kinds of things in the area. I've got markers popping up all over here from freight and postal service and scarlet oaks and the root beer stand and i've got and when you zoom in you get more and more stuff so um but most of those things aren't of interest to me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change my base map right now by going down to the corner of my map menu and i'm going to change my base map to this middle option mono city there's lots of options here uh, and you can choose the one that suits your needs but for now let's go with mono city and what that does is it grays out everything except for my markers so now as I zoom out, you can see that I've got, you know, like five markers right there in the high school area. I've got a marker right there where the STEAM Academy is and a couple of markers over where the Innovation Center and Central Office are. Cool. All right. Um, next, I want to add a, another layer to my map. Um, but before I do that, uh, I'm going to pause the video and, and just check something to make sure I have my file real quick. What you can do... Um, is go ahead and open up in a separate tab. Let's open up your, uh, your work from last week, which was called the restaurant data. Go ahead and open up your restaurant data sheet and uh, I'll pick right back up. All right, so I'm back. I don't know why my picture is not back, but um, anyhow, <laughs> the, the reason I paused the video, sorry about that. The reason I paused the video is to make sure that I did indeed have my um, restaurant data sheet all complete. And I do now, all right? So um, we're gonna go ahead and, I want you to go ahead and open yours up to make sure it's a recently accessed document. And then let's go back to your map again. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to add a second layer on to your map. So what you can do here, okay? Let me see if I can make my picture any smaller here. It's not really doing us any good like that, is it? All right, so what we can do here is you've got these locations from your Princeton City Schools layer, I'm going to go ahead and toggle those off right here. Um, before I toggle them, I'm going to change the styles. You can change um, the color, the name, the description of these things. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to toggle off the visibility. So now there's no points on my map, but that's because my layer visibility was turned off. All right. I want to now add a second layer. Okay, and instead of manually naming my layer and um, manually entering those points, those locations, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the data from our restaurant spreadsheet. So when I click add layer, it gives me an untitled layer. Let's go ahead and import some data. And as you might have guessed, we're going to we're going to go to Google Drive and we're going to go to recent and we're going to find. If it's not there, you can search for it. It's called restaurant data sheet, but more than likely, since you just opened it, it should be right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and go ahead and insert that data. Now, look, it says choose columns to position your place marks. OK, if you did put in correctly, put in your latitude and longitude. OK, that's great. That's probably what's going to come up as the place um, ways to position. But uh, I think we should probably just go ahead and turn on all of this information. So let's go ahead and put a check mark in all of these categories so they all show up as attribute data on our map. I'll go ahead and click continue. The next question asks um, which column, which field do we want to be the title of each uh, map location? And we're going to choose the name of the restaurant to be um, the title of each location. So we'll go to finish and look what it does. It thinks for a second and then it pops up with all of your five locations throughout the city. Now I spread mine out about, about the city a little bit, so they're not all in one location. But look at that. Isn't that neat? I've got my five locations. I can click on one, and I can see what that restaurant is. I put in all of this information in my spreadsheet, so it does all pop up on my map. Okay, I can go over here to Milford and go to Bite Restaurant. I can go back to Madeira and get some Atavala. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Atavala. So I should probably go over here and update it. 
Atavaloa. It's not that. It's Atavala. I wonder if it updates my map automatically. Probably not. But let's find out. Refresh my map here. And let's go back to here. Yeah, no, I would have to re-import that data, unfortunately. Um, which is a good reason to make sure that all of your data is complete over here in your spreadsheet before importing it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so what we did there was we just created a couple of layers. Okay, I've got my restaurant layer I can turn on. I've got my Princeton City Schools that I could turn on or off. Or I could have both of them on at the same time. Okay. And then I could go in and I could go to the bottom and change my base map so I can see what that actually looks like amongst all the other points in the city. All right. Um, this is what I want you to get done for class today. So um, once you get to this point, you can have fun adding more items to your list. You can add more items to your layers manually. Okay. It looks like updating your spreadsheet will not automatically update the map. Um, there may be a way to resync that. I'm not sure what that is, though. Let's just try that real quick. Open data table. Yeah, so if I can, if I click that on the map, it's going to bring all of my data in here, and I can actually add rows like that. Cool. All right. Well, folks, once you're to this point, go ahead and play around with it and have fun. Explore a little bit if you want to. But um, that's it for the requirements for today. So um, I'll see you in class. Take care. Bye-bye.